Hello, my name is Jen Zarowski and I'm the Library Media Instructional Technology Specialist in the School District of West De Pere. Um, tonight we have kind of a special professional development um, option for our teachers. We've had several teachers um, talk to us about doing listen to reading with iTunes and audiobooks and um, especially iPod shuffles, but the whole kind of grouping of iDevices that are out there. Um, so the majority of the on air tonight is going to be uh, one of our first grade teachers, Jen Lambrick, who is over at Hemlock Creek Elementary right now. Hey! Hello. This is where you want to be at 7.30 at night. Um, and she's going to actually be doing some screen sharing and guiding us through um, exactly how to set up playlists and different groupings of audiobooks um, in iTunes so that you can get your iDevices prepared so that your students can be pretty self-sufficient um, for that listen to reading time in your classroom. Uh, I will mention a couple different ways or at least one way that you could do this with just regular MP3 players uh, in case you don't have iDevices as an option in your district. Um, and I will also preface this conversation with um, just be really careful with copyright. Um, in our situation, we are our our teachers are using a their district iTunes account. Um, the majority of them are are getting books from uh, Scholastic or buying with whatever with their classroom money. Um, but with copyright, my understanding, and we've had many conversations with about this in the district, is that you know if you convert over to that audio file, um, it's still the same rules apply. It needs to be on uh, one device and one copy of the audio file. So I'm just I'm by no means a copyright expert, but uh, just be careful with what you're doing as far as sharing those audio files. Um, okay, enough of the boring stuff. Um, I'm gonna head over to Jen, and um, I know she's gonna be doing some screen sharing and talking a little bit about. Um, well, a lot about the process of getting all of your audiobooks onto iTunes. So um, I don't know if there's anything you want to start with. Go for it if there is, and then you can just hop right into uh, screen sharing. Okay, sounds good. Uh, I'll start by just giving you a couple of tips on um, how to prepare for doing this. So I'm going to screen share right away so I can get it. The first thing you want to do, um, so my directions will be matching up with what your iTunes will look like. You want to make sure that you upgrade to the newest version of iTunes. And the newest version of iTunes is actually red. It used to be blue. So that's the first step you'll want to do. Otherwise, my directions might not match ex exactly what your iTunes might be showing. So and I'm just going to interrupt, sure. interrupt for one second. Um, we will post the directions on the event page too. So if you're tuning in, I see we have a few viewers down at the bottom. Um, if you're tuning in, we will post the directions that she's going through on that event page in a Google Doc so that you can make a copy of it and have it in Google Drive as well. So go for it. <laughs> All right. Um, so if you have the, the newest version of iTunes, it'll look something like this. Um, and then you also want to have books and things that are here. Sorry, I'm new to the switching. Um, books with CDs. So I have just an example. I have grabbed one from my room. I have One Winter's Day. I have two copies of this book, but most books I only have one. And then you'll want to have the CDs to ready to go on as well. Um, you also might want to consider getting some headphone splitters. I have two different kinds. I have one. This is just a generic um, splitter and it can be split two ways so those two students can be listening to the same story. And then I also have some rock stars but of course I'm not sure where I set it. Um, a rock star is just another kind of splitter that splits it multiple ways. Um, another thing is let's see, um, headphones for the kids to use obviously. And then the next big thing is you have to decide where to save all of your files because you can't save them on your L drive or your L drive will get filled up pretty fast. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a and folder. And if you're outside of our district, I know we had a couple people joining in from outside the district. Um, our L drive is our personal um, storage space in the district, and IT would, would probably wring our necks if we decided to put a million audio files on there. So um, 
Yeah, we, we usually recommend like an external hard drive or flash drive or something for things like this. Yeah, and um, to, for mine, I just created a place on the C drive because I have all the CDs. So if something were to happen to my computer, I would still have them all backed up on the mm -hmm. CD. So I just go to my C drive and then right click and make a new folder. And I just name my file books. That's where I can save all of my stories. So that would be the first step. Um, and then once you've done that, you can go right into iTunes. If you plug in your um, iPod, it should automatically open, but if it doesn't, you can just double click on it and have it open. Um, you should see the screen when you plug in your new iPod that looks just like this. Um, Kelsey Lapierre is letting me borrow her computer and iPod to show you guys how to do this tonight. So then you just hit continue and then check I have read and agreed to the software agreement. And then you can get started. So when you plug it in, um, the first thing you need to do is you need to change your settings on your computer so it knows where it will save all of your files onto that folder that you already created. So if you go up to the corner to the menu and go down to preferences, it will bring up the menu for preferences. Uh, if you go to, then the first thing to do would be go to general and just make sure that when it, it check this area right here, it says when you insert a CD, ask to import the CD. And that's, I think that's what it automatically says, just make sure to confirm that that's what it does say. That's the first step that I would do. And then the next would be go all the way over to advanced. This is where you can pick what file it comes from. So then you would just click on change and find the file on your C drive that you made called books. And here's the one that I just made called books. So I would just select this folder. And now when I import a CD, it will automatically save it into that folder. So that's all set, and you're ready to um, start putting in your CDs. Let's see here. So next, then you'll pop in. Let's see here. Pop in your CD. And I'm just waiting for the CD to load. Once the CD is loaded, um, this should automatically pop up. If it doesn't, you can always just click on this little picture of a CD right here. And it should automatically ask you to import, like we said earlier in the settings, and just click yes. Now there are two files that you can choose from. One of them will have the chimes to turn the page, and one of them does not. The one that's just a little bit longer, the top one, is the one with the chimes, and that's usually the one that I import um, or put on the things, but you can import both of them or just one of them. It's up to you. So once you click that, it'll start, yes to import, it will start spinning, and that means that it is importing it, and it'll show how much longer it has left up here. So this, it just takes about a minute for each one. I'll uncheck the second one and just do the top one for right now. So this is obviously, I mean, a process in itself to just, um, for people to, if they're just starting out and they have a lot of CDs, um, to just get everything imported would be a, a huge first step. Yes, it does take a while, and I did mine little by little. I mm -hmm. ordered the Scholastic book pack, um, I think almost every month for my first year of teaching. It's $15, and it has four books and four CDs, and I just did them four at a time. You know, each wow. month I would just do the four. So it doesn't get to be too overwhelming. Well, and I don't think I mentioned at the beginning, but you know, one of the big reasons that we've kind of started doing this is because we have a a lack of CD players anymore. We're really kind of moving over to that digital digital world, um, and the library right now is not paying for an audiobook solution at this point that the kids can actually check out. Um, so that's kind of where, in our district at least, where this is all coming from. All right, back to you, girl. Okay. Now that it has imported, there's a green check mark next to the box, so that means it is all set to go. Now you could continue to import different CDs. I'll put in just one more, so we have a couple to put on. So I took out one, and I'm just sticking, putting the other one in the CD drive now. So we'll just wait another minute for it to pop up. 
Genma, we're waiting for that to happen. If yep. somebody already has all of their um, books, you know, on their computer, yep. um, they don't have to go back to obviously re-import them. So do you have suggestions for that, if that would come up? Um, yes, there is a way to find, um, you can add files to your library. So if you already have them on your computer somewhere and it's not in iTunes, you can click on this add file to library and go to where it is located on your computer and okay. just add them to iTunes. Okay, because I know we definitely have teachers in the district that already have the digital files, but they're not using right. iTunes, so that yeah, would be helpful. Yeah, so you can do it that way, and then you can, it will import all of them. And I know there's there's kind of a perception that you have to have a credit card associated with your iTunes account. Was there anything you had to do with Kelsey's? I did not. I nope, never asked for, okay. for my information. Okay, good to all know. Right, so now I have two on here, and if I click on this um, little musical note in the corner, it will show the two that I have. Now some of them will come up with the name of the actual book, like my first one that I did, and some of them will not. You can always just click on it to rename it. So this one was called Fiesta Fiasco. And I do suggest having the name. It'll just make it a lot easier down the road. So if it doesn't automatically pop up again, I just double clicked on it and changed the name myself. Alright, so now we have the two books on and now we can move them on to the iPod. So if you look at the top, it has little icons for everything. So the CD, I still have in there, there's a little icon. And then this is this little rectangle. It looks like a little iPod. That's the iPod that I have plugged in. So you can kind of click in between whenever you need to. Um, um, my, Of course, my iTunes looks a little different than Kelsey's does. Maybe, I don't know if it's the view. There, I can do it this way. You can, one way to put them on, if you only have a few, you can just drag and drop them right onto your iPod. So if I want to put One Winter's Day now onto that iPod, all I have to do is click on it and then drag it right onto here and it will automatically put it on. You can see at the top that it says it's copying it to Kelsey's iPod. And then I can do the same thing for the next one. I just all I'm doing is clicking on it and dragging it over to the left and putting it right on top of her iPod. So now if I click back to her iPod, they they're both on there. And to see them, all you have to you can click on on my device and it will show you which two are on there. So that's one way that you can get them on there one one at a time. And this one's still I don't know why it has it changed the name, but oops, sorry. Um, so that's one way to put them on there. The other way that I mentioned, like I we kind of talked about earlier, was to make a playlist. Um, so I on mine, I have a playlist for each month. So now that I've had them in there for a while, I don't have to go in and create lists all the time and decide which ones I want on at a time. I have files for every month and then I change, all I have to do is click one button to change the books each month. So I have all of my January books together and all of my February books together and then at the, at the beginning of each month all I have to do is go in and um, essentially just click one button to change it. So can, I, can I just stop you for one second? Um, yep. I noticed that when you had put them already on the iPod, yep. you went in and did you right click and hit delete to get them off? Oh yes, yep, sorry. Okay. That's a good point. Yep, all no, I did was right right okay. click and then I deleted them to remove them. Perfect. I just think a lot of people think if I delete them they're going to be gone gone, but that's yep. not the case with iTunes. Nope. There's still there's a still music still library. Yep. They're just if not on them. If you delete them from my music from here, they will be gone. Okay. But if thanks for clarifying. Yeah, but if you're in your iPod and in the on my device section and you want to remove them, all you have to do is right click. Okay, thanks. Yep, thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. um, so the next step then, if you do want to take it to the next step and you do want to create playlists, um, if you look up at the top, I'm again, I'm in the, um, the music section and there's a button right, a little switch here called playlists. So all you have to do is click on this playlist button and then at the very bottom left corner there's a plus sign. To create a playlist, you can click on the plus and then new playlist. Um, up here it'll ask you for a name and I, like I said I save mine as months so I'll pretend that I want to save this one for January. 
And then to add, all I want to do now to add to here is click Add To, and I can drag and drop any of the books that I would like on my playlist for January. Once I have all of the books on there for January that I want, then I just have to click Done. So now I have, on the left, it'll show up here, a January playlist. So now that that's done, I can go back to the iPod, and I want, this time I want to click on Music, because nothing's on the device yet, I have to still put it on. So I would click on Music, and click the box that says Sync Music. Now I don't want my entire library to sync while I am putting all of them on there right now. Usually, like on my computer, I have a couple hundred songs and, and books. So you don't want all of them on there at one time, so you have to pick this one that says Selected Playlists. And then all I have to do is go down here, and it'll show all of my playlists. And I check the box for January, and then hit Apply. And now that playlist for January will automatically sync onto the iPod. So up here, it, um, this is important to know, too. It says Syncing iPod. Do not disconnect. If you unplug it before it's done, they, they won't be on there. So just watch to make sure before you unplug it that it says that it is complete. So now it says iPod Sync is complete. Um, eject before disconnecting. And to eject, you can safely remove the hardware down here. Eject Apple iPod. And then you can take it, unplug it, and it's ready for the kids to use. My That's thing. a lot easier than I thought it would be. What was that? That was a lot easier than I thought yeah, it would be. Yeah, you know, and it's gotten easier as time has gone on. Like, the directions that I have, they look quite lengthy, um, but really it's just because there's a lot of steps, but right. it's not too complicated, especially once you do it a couple times, it gets a lot easier. Right. That's awesome. Oh, I don't know. Mary? Oh, you got to unmute. He's still, he's yeah. still muted. Yes. <laughs> okay, so since you're here with us, is there any questions that you have, or did I go through anything too fast? No. Uh-oh. He's breaking up a little bit. Yeah, we might have lost Mary. We might have. Um, <laughs> the beauty of doing it in this fashion is that, you know, like even the playlist part was a little quick for me, but this yeah. is going to be archived on YouTube. Right. And, uh, I mean, all you have to do is just keep going back. It's differentiated professional development. It's perfect. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, it wasn't too long either, which is great. It just it'll be easy to go back and view those things if you need to. Mary is still stuck in a very awkward position. I know, I was just thinking the same thing. She's going to be so mad. <laughs> um, and I can kind of go over real quick. If you have an MP3s, it really depends. I'll do a quick screen share as well. Um, I'm just going to plug in a flash drive. I don't have an MP3 player, but a flash drive is going to look very similar as far as how it comes up. Um, if you are... I'm going to go ahead and screen share. Um, if you are doing ebooks or audiobooks, I should call should have called it. Um, realistically, if you have a folder of audiobooks on your computer and you plug in a um, MP3 player, MP3 players usually come up exactly the way a um, a flash drive would come up or any other kind of storage device, um, and usually there it is. If you click on that, you can actually go in. This is actually my friend's um, wedding and baby pictures, but same same kind of thing here. If you have that folder um, with your audiobooks and you've created your whoops your folder of MP3 um, on your MP3 player, you simply just highlight those things and drag them right into that MP3 player. So. Um, very much like Jen was talking about. Uh, I'm going to un unshare my screen here. Um, same situation, you know how she made the folder on the C drive and had audio all of her audiobooks in there. She's just using iTunes as a software to kind of distribute those playlists. But you could definitely have different folders um, set up on your computer that you dragged into an MP3 player as well. So just depending on what kind of devices you have in your classroom, that would also work too. Yeah, and if anyone has any questions, I'm always available. You know, if I if anyone needs any help, especially if you're here at Hemlock Creek, it's really easy to pop right. in. 
And I did think of something while you were showing that that I didn't mention. So I'm going to screen share again real quick. Sure. All right. Um, if once you get to the end of the month and you want to switch, um, you can. I'll show you how to switch to a different playlist. So if you are done with one playlist and you want to switch to a different one, you just plug in your iPod again and click on here on the little image of your i of the iPad or of the iPod. I'm sorry. And then go to back to music. And I created another playlist called February. So all you do to change playlists is you check the new February box and uncheck January and then hit apply again. So if you have more than one, you just uncheck and then recheck. Okay. So I just thought and, of that. Uh, I noticed, thanks for clarifying that. That's really helpful. I, we have, um, I just got an email from someone. I, we have several people watching too. And if anybody else is watching and has a question, you can pop it on the events page because I'm checking my email. Um, Chris Newens is asking, what's the difference between downloading the CDs to your drive and downloading the CDs to iTunes? She said she does the CDs to iTunes, does it matter? Well, I'm, I guess I don't understand the... So she's saying, basically it kind of went along with my question of yeah. if people have already ripped their CDs oh, yeah. to the computer, um, maybe you can clarify and show that one more time where they would go. Okay. So if you rip the CDs to iTunes like Jen did, yep. then they're simply in a, a specified folder. Basically, iTunes is creating that folder for you on your C drive. But if you work in reverse and you've already created your folder on your C drive, then I'll have Jen screen share and show you where to go to upload those one more time. Okay, let me go back to my screen share. All right, so let's go to iTunes. Um, to, if you already have them saved somewhere else on your computer, not in iTunes, and you go to the menu and add file to library, you can then, I'll just go back to my one that I made on the C drive. You would find it, say you had it on your C drive, and then you would find them. Um, iTunes kind of does a really good job of hiding them, so you have to click, do a lot of clicking to find them. So um, here's one winter's day. So I would click it, and then I would just click on on the song, and then click open, and then it should import it, which is going to be probably not going to work because I already have them in here. But that's the way that you would do it: is you would go to add file to library, and then find it, and then click open, and it should add it to your iTunes. But since I already have it in there, it's not going to add it again. Right. So that to clarify, sense. essentially they're going to the same spot. Yes. Uh, just that one has already been done. If you've already done it, you can just go to that file upload area. If you haven't done it, then you can just go right into iTunes and rip the CDs. It's called yeah. ripping. People don't know that. Rip know. the CDs right in iTunes. It sounds kind of weird, but... Um, yeah. and it's if you're planning on using iTunes, it's definitely easier to import them through iTunes. So right. if, if it's your goal to have them on an iPod, I would suggest as soon as possible starting by to import them through iTunes. It takes out a couple of steps in the process. Can people use iTunes with a regular MP3 player? That I do not know. I don't I, think so. I don't think so. I don't know 100% either. I don't think so either, but I, I'm definitely not 100% sure. I'm guessing it no. Be, it wouldn't be easy, I don't think, if you could. That would not be the Apple way of doing things, so I doubt it. <laughs> Me too. Um, Mary, we can try again now that you're back and not unfrozen. Um, did you have any questions? Um, I guess the only question, it doesn't matter how long because looking at like a novel instead of a picture book, yep. can you do any length CD? It won't matter? No, yeah. I have a few chapter book CDs. I don't use them often because it's um, hard for my kids at first grade to find where they were and pick up again. Right. But you can, because on um, most longer books, they have different tracks. Correct. So, you know, if it's a chapter book, there's like five tracks, you know, your kids could pick, oh, I was on this part, I'm on track two. So okay. you could, it doesn't, the length doesn't matter as long as you have enough room on your iPod, and you should because... I don't know if you saw at the bottom, but I, I mean, my, I had a few songs on there or yeah. books, and it really didn't take up much of the space on the iPod. So as long as there's room on there, um, yeah, it does not matter the length. So if you have several novels on your playlist or in your iTunes account, yep, 
but if you did it the same way you you had done with January February, mm -hmm. you can have them all in your iTunes account. But if you only have January put on the iPod, yep. that that's will all, that's, that's all that will show up on there. Okay, perfect. Yep. Yep. You don't want you want to just make sure that the um in t there's a box here. I'll screen share one more time. Okay. There is a box on there that is says. It says um, to sync music, and this says entire music library. If you have that button clicked, all of your songs that you have in your iTunes will be on there. Okay. So you, I mean, most likely you won't want that. Um, okay. I suggest not having more than like five, like for picture books, no more than five or six at a time, because then it's harder for them to find the one that they want. And okay. that actually brings up another thing that I thought of um, on. New iPods. That's what I was just going to ask if you can talk a little bit about devices. Obviously, the age of your kids is going to depend on how much you're going to put on there. Yes. And but you want to talk a little bit about how, how, what you do or what you use in your room yep. and what you think would be best based on the different age groups? I, yes. In first grade, I think we have about five or six books every month. And um, the new iPod shuffles, I don't know if I can hold it up to the camera here. You might not be able to see it, but they have the they have they look like this. And the button to turn them on has two different on positions. So there is a halfway on and then there's like an all the way on. It's I know it's kind of confusing, but um, let's see if I can show it. It has see how it's like in the middle? I think if you back it up just a little bit. A little bit. Okay. It, yeah, it might be hard to tell, but there's a, the silver on button is in the middle, and that means that it will play all of the songs in order. So you know okay. it'll always keep them one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. If they slide it all the way over, it shuffles them. So if they have it slid all the way over, it's much more difficult to find the story that they want. So I try to teach my kids to just turn it one click on not all the way. And if you look at the back side, you'll see there's a little picture and it has um, off and then it has like the circular continuous and then it has the one that it's like all mixed up like an eight. So you have to, that might be something that you have to talk to your kids about ahead of time. I actually made a video of my kids using the iPods to teach them at the beginning of the year. So at the beginning I can just show them the video of the other kids teaching them how to use it. Um, Maybe I you can post that on the event page. Yeah, too. I can post it. It's not perfect, but it's 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 cute, and the kids seem to to learn from it. So, right. um, and it's one of our daily five choices, and um, no more than two kids can listen at a time. It gets a little crazy if there's more than two, and I usually only have one book, so two it's easy to share a book, and if there's so two books, you get one. Is there an air if they get it in the half position? Is there an arrow forward on the shuffle to select the book that they want? Yep, it's um, there is a there's the white circle, mm -hmm. and if you click at the top is the volume to go up. The bottom of the circle is the volume down, and then you can click. The other sides are you just click through, and the middle is play and pause. So they're very easy to use. I tried using other iPods that were cheaper with my kids and they were often very confusing and hard for the kids to figure out. That's why I really like the shuffles. They cost a little bit more at like about $47, $46 depending on where you get them. But they're really easy to use. And they I've seem never... pretty durable too. What was that? They seem pretty durable. Yeah, they're durable. I've had one break and I've used them for probably three years. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty good. Um, and I actually had one at home of my own. Um, so this one's bigger because it's older, but so I just brought this from home because I never use it at home anymore to replace it. But um, I'll get a new one next year to replace it because they're not too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, um, I'm trying to think of they're pretty good at using them in the classroom. Like I said, I just really make sure to teach them at the beginning of the year the procedures on how to turn it on, how to turn up the volume, how to turn it down, how to go through the songs and pick them. And, and I tell them, too, um, when you are doing the listening to reading with a friend, you have to sit eek, just like when you're doing read to someone, to encourage okay. them to be sharing and both looking at the pages at the same time. Do you have any um, suggestions for charging? Do you charge them every day? Do you have a container or any solutions for that for people that um, are trying to get I, conversations together? You know, it's, 
that's kind of a tough one because it's hard to manage making sure they're on and off every day. So I um, used to have them by the door. So whenever we were leaving for like specials or whatever after daily five, I would just check them quickly. Um, but this year that didn't work out with how our room was laid out. So I have them um, by our iPads. And so when I plug in the iPads, I'll often take those and plug them into my computer. They come with this little itty bitty dinky cord to charge them, uh, which is good and bad. <laughs> They're easy to lose, but I just try to leave them plugged into the computer all the time if I don't need the USB. And then all to charge them, all you have to do is just plug it into the headphone jack. So they do need a computer to charge, or could you get the plug-ins with the USB and um, use that? You, I'm sure you could plug them into any other Apple charger, but I always just plug them into my computer. Okay. Um, and when you do plug them in, iTunes automatically opens. So it can be, it's just something explain. to know about. Because um, I've plugged them in before while the kids are on the computer, and then it pops up, and they don't know what to do. You can turn that off, um, but... It's nice that it does that because then when you do plug them in to change the songs, it automatically comes up. So just be aware that when you plug them in, it will iTunes does automatically open, and it takes about a minute for that to open. I would say. Um, just one last thing: Are is there any advice that you have if they're using multiple? Um, would they go through the same exact process again to set up the different devices, or yes? Um, and I have, you can have different, um, the different songs, you know, I call them songs, but they're really books, on different ones. So I'm trying to find Kelsey's other one. <laughs> I've, I've been here for like 10 minutes and I'm already losing, oh, it's right in front of me. Um, so <laughs> I'll plug in her other one. You can tell it's 8 o'clock. Yeah. So I'll plug in and I'll screen share again quick. So now I have two of them plugged in. So now when you look at the um, little picture of the iPods, two of both of them will show. Uh, when I set this one up for her, I renamed it. So you can also rename the iPods if you choose um, to do so. You just have to double click on the name. So um, you would do the same thing for the green one. You can kind of switch back and forth. So if I wanted to add the playlist to her green iPad, iPod, just like I did on the other one, I would again go to Music sync and then selected playlists and then I could pick I put the February playlist on the other one so this one I would put the January playlist or if you could do playlist A and B or whatever you choose and then I would just hit apply so now um, there'd be two different books, okay, so be different books on the green one and different books on the blue one okay um, Jen I have a question can you put yep. the same playlist on more than one iPod um, that would be a, correct me if I'm wrong, Jen, a copyright issue. Right, okay. Right, and that's, yeah. we kind of talked about that right at the beginning. It, that's right. what gets a little um, hairy, I guess. I talked to Mike, our um, library media director, and our understanding, as far as fair use goes, would be that it would be okay to obviously rip it to have a digital file if we don't have CD players but then that's still only one one file for one device, just like if it were, were a CD. So we're going with that right now. I am going to contact Scholastic because um, even, we even talked about um, putting those audio files into Google Drive and putting them on a teacher website that would only be shared with that those students. Um, we're guessing that's not okay, but we're not sure. So... Um, we're we're going to try to get some clarification on this. It's just there's so many gray areas, and we're trying to be make sure that we're relaying the right information to everybody, but it's just really confusing. So from our perspective, um, we're kind of going with, you know, district would have to purchase district iTunes account in case you would leave and, and the next teacher would have to take it over or be able to get those. Um, and then classroom budget would buy those books you could then rip them to an audio file and then put them on one device. So uh, hopefully that helps <laughs> to clarify. Yep. Um, but it's just, it is confusing. Anything else I'm missing? I'm just checking. We have a couple people. Okay.
couple other people in and out um, as far as viewers go. So uh, I haven't gotten any more emails, so I think we're good there. Um, anything else from your perspective, Mary? Or are you feeling okay? No, I think I think it's great. Um, I hope <laughs> that I can find. It's so hard to find um, upper elementary books on CD. Yeah. To, to use. So you might be surprised though. They might like the picture books. Just oh, I know. As much. <laughs> They do like them, but it's not. It doesn't sustain them long enough during a daily five round because our daily five rounds are a little bit longer than yours. Right. Yeah. And we have um, in the past. We've had. I've tried um, response sheets. There are some out there that you can find, like on Teacher Pay Teacher or Pinterest, where it's listen to reading and then they have to respond right. on a sheet of paper. I um, for first grade, I had to kind of give that up because it was just a little too much for first graders. But that's something that might be, you know, better so they could listen to a short book and then follow up with those sheets yeah. too. And I do have, I think I still have them, but I just don't okay. use them any longer. Um, and then also, um, I told the kids, you know, if you're reading and you finish a book and there's only a couple minutes left, you can always just read yourself after two. Right. So, you know, instead of getting into starting a new book when you know there's only a couple minutes left. It's another thing we've kind of run into in the past. Okay. Awesome. Well, Jen, I just wanted to say thank you so much for doing this, um, and a huge thank you to our curriculum director, who I'm sure is not watching. <laughs> Hopefully she isn't. She's got many other better things to do. Yeah. Um, but she uh, was totally supportive of this and even gave us a free prize for one of the attendees. Which oh, yeah. Is I didn't hold it up. So, um, <laughs> Mary, if you um, can't find any benefit to having these in your classroom, feel free to pass them along to someone else who you think might love them. You'll love them. It's got mistletoe in there. A mistletoe. That's like the best Christmas book ever. <laughs> love <Yeah>. mistletoe. <laughs> I do. It's great. Yeah, and I'll share that video, and then um, I have the directions written out too. So if the you know, I know I went a little fast, but you can always rewatch and pause. Rewind. And yeah. The directions. Yeah. If you would share the uh, directions and the video on the um, on the events page, that'd be awesome. So. Yeah. No problem. Anyway, um, I, we've definitely had people popping in and out, so hello to all of you, too. And hopefully you found it useful. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.